This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, football fans, and welcome to The Onside Kick. My name is Ricky Widmer, and this week, joined solo act again by Mark Weber. How's it going, guys? Dave uh, couldn't be here again, Mark. He said work is just a little... I, I feel like a broken record. Work is too tough. That's all I hear out of Dave. Yeah, I, I'm not convinced he's actually doing any work. I'm convinced he's playing PlayStation. I don't know. I've heard uh, some conflicting reports on uh, on our Dave issue. Some of my friends, uh, my friend's girlfriend was like, oh yeah, he said he was going to the podcast last week. Dave wasn't here last week. So what's up, Dave? What are you doing? I, I want to know. I think he's got a secret life going on right now. Does he got a side piece? I think he does. A side piece on us. He's got a side piece. He's got yeah. a side piece on the podcast. Drake. Drake's singing about it. His a little side piece. But before we get into today, I feel like I know for me and Mark, our thoughts and prayers, we have to send him out to Cam Newton. Claw up. I was... Were you shocked when you heard the news on... Uh, I was... Uh, I actually... I saw it on tv and like it's weird because i t- tune into sports center and he's just laying there smiling uh-huh and i'm like what the hell's going on and like you see the car accident and you're like you're like oh this is a disaster I, I expected it to be worse i at first didn't think it was real because i found out on my lunch break at work so i'm at school teaching go into the lunchroom pull out my phone flip open facebook first thing i see dead spin cam newton and car crash and i'm like what what's going on and our thoughts and prayers have to go out to him. Uh, I hear that he's making a speedy recovery, so at least he's good, but still, thoughts and prayers have to go out with him. Today, we're going to be talking about Jay Gruden and the Redskins. Ooh. Do you think, and we'll get right into that, do you think Jay Gruden should be fired? Because this week, especially when I was watching PTI, it's a huge question of RG3 or Jay Gruden. Who stays, who goes? Yeah, you do have a choice right now. Because the the reports are that the the more management uh, they want RG three here, so still. like the Dan Snyder's, and, yeah, and they you know they paid a lot of uh, property and players to get him on this team essentially. Um, so I, you really do have a choice, but and when you look at it like that, you kind of think there's no choice. But if it's me, I'm sorry, RG three, it hasn't really worked out since that first miraculous rookie season. I'm saying see you later. I'm letting the coach make the decision. Not that I thought Jay Gruden was that great of a choice uh, for coaching candidate anyways, but you made that choice. So stick with it. Don't give him a chud. Well, and well, and when you say give him a chud, that means you're referring to what the Browns did to the chud, the chud after one year in uh, Cleveland. They fired him. But I feel like after this week, it gets a little bit testy because Jeff Fisher and the Rams came in. Not only did they beat your butts on your home field, but for the to- for the coin toss, Jeff Fisher goes ahead and sends Stedman Bailey, Janoris Jenkins, Michael Brockers, Zach Stacy, who uh, has been doing some good things for the Rams, Greg Robinson, and Alec Ogletree. Those six players, all of the players that they got for RG3. Hey, look what you could have had. You could have had these six guys, but no, you wanted RG3. You got uh, Colt McCoy starting at quarterback right now. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. Just a quick shout-out, though, to the St. Louis Rams. Back, to, I know we're playing Oakland and Washington, but back-to-back convincing shutout wins. I love it. I love yeah, seeing that because we wanted good things out of the Rams' uh, defense, and, and they, I mean, they've shown up sometimes, sometimes not so much. And like I told you before the podcast, the Rams may be in last place in their division, but they're a 6-7 and seven last place team. Yeah. They're almost at 500. Almost. Maybe. not. They won't be. But may, actually, I mean, they do play New York in there, so that helps out a little bit. But you got to win uh, an Arizona or Seattle game in there, too. But getting back to Washington, you're 3-10 and 10 on the season. Here are your wins. You've got one against Jacksonville week two, of course, but it's Jacksonville. You got to eh, – I'm going to say – a good overtime win against Dallas. Probably your only good win because it's Dallas. But at the same time, Dallas was struggling for a little bit. And then a two-point win over Tennessee where Tennessee's not that good themselves. Here's why I say don't get rid of Jay Gruden after one season. And I, I know for all you uh, Washington fans, I think there's something in Jay Gruden's contract that avoids this. But, of course, the media is going to talk about it anyways. 
Jay Gruden had so much success as an offensive coordinator in Cincy because who was his quarterback? Well, he didn't really have much of a quarterback in Andy Dalton. Well, no, he Andy Dalton may not be like the Tom Brady's, but Andy Dalton is what Jay Gruden wants in a quarterback, a pocket guy. And during the regular season, Andy Dalton, especially when you had A.J. Green out there, he, he was doing good. Get to the playoffs, it's a different story. But RG3 doesn't fit with our, what Jay Gruden wants to do on offense. And when you have a guy like Deshaun Jackson who can do anything on the football field and has been doing amazing things this year but doesn't have the quarterback to throw it to him, I think if you're Dan Snyder, you go, hey, you know what? We really want this to work, but it's just not going to. And I'm saying RG3. It's just not going to work. Yeah, I, I do think RG3 is the one that has to go. But at the same – I mean, I don't know. There's a little bit of a different situation than when I talk about Chicago or mm-hmm. when I what I was nervous about in Cleveland as well because I don't think there's a quarterback really on that roster. I do think RG3 can go somewhere else and possibly be good. I think a fresh start will do a lot of – a lot of good for him. Uh, but at the same time, I just think there's not really a quarterback on that roster, and I don't know who you're going to go and grab. I mean, you are towards the front of the draft, so you're going to have a good choice. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm just not can. – I'm a little nervous because I, I am – so much is going to depend on, oh, all right, you get rid of RG3, you better find somebody. Well, this is and, your one year to do it. Well, and the big question is – is Marcus Mariota the answer for whoever gets him? Is he really the answer? Because how many times have we seen great quarterback in college doesn't pan out in the NFL? And the first one I think of is Tim Tebow. Uh, Tim Tebow is the first one I think of a great quarterback in college, great quarterback in the NFL. No, he was not a great quarterback in the NFL. He won a playoff game. Okay, a playoff game. Yeah. That's, that's it was not nice. anything. But it I was mean, nice. The one thing that... I think of this is what I'm comparing it to in my head, and I'm going to ask you if you if this is a good analogy. It's kind of like Dan Snyder and RG3 or that boyfriend girlfriend, where one of them makes the mistake. It could be the boyfriend or the girlfriend, and the other one goes, "You know what? Instead of breaking up, we're going to make this work. We're going to try our hardest to make this work." But in the end, you're like, "You know what? This isn't going to work out." That's what's happening in Washington. Yeah, you can still see the claw marks on the back. And Dan Snyder, I think RG3, if he went, let's say, to the Jets, because that's a team that I've read that the media is speculating could trade for RG3. If he went to the Jets, he'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm in New York now. But Dan Snyder's like, I have given up so much for you. Yeah. I am not going to let you go. And it could be the demise of oh, yeah, Dan Snyder sure. ultimately He does not want to admit, hey— you remember all of those picks I gave up? That was a mistake. Sorry, guys. Like, he did, really does not want that to be what it was. Because he was saying, we know we're not going to get Andrew Luck, but that's okay. RG3 is our guy. And RG3 is going to do as good, if not better, than Andrew Luck. And not even close. Uh, and, you know, injury has a big part of it, sure. Well, I mean, but it's still RG3 it's had a great rookie season, but after the injury... It's done And I mean, at that point. we... We mentioned him earlier because of his accent this week, but I'm going to bring in Cam Newton because earlier this season they were talking about how these quarterbacks, these mobile quarterbacks, Cam Newton, Colin Kaepernick, and you can throw RG3 in there because of his injury, they're getting to the point of their career. Okay, you're getting older, especially for Cam and Colin. With Robert, it's just all on his injury. You cannot play like you used to. You have to adjust your game and be more of a pocket guy if you want to have success in this league. If Robert wants to stay with the Redskins, he has to prove to Jay Gruden that, hey, I can be a pocket guy. Maybe I'm thinking maybe a little bit like a Jay Cutler-esque guy where I'm a pocket guy, but if shit breaks down, I'm going to scramble out, but I'm looking for the pass, not the run. Oh, for sure. I think uh, I. I mean, I think most of these mobile quarterbacks should do that anyways because you you have to know. I I wonder the mindset of a guy like uh, Johnny Manziel, uh, EJ Manuel when he came in, Geno Smith. Like, do they think they're going to have long careers? Because the evidence proves you're going to last maybe three or four if you're lucky. Uh, if I mean if you're 
if you're lucky, you you might be Mike Vick, mm-hmm. who's still getting paid. But Mike Vick also had some time outside of the NFL. Um, I'm sure they don't want to be Mike Vick in that case, but you know what I'm saying here. Uh, I you can't come into the league and say, yeah, you know what? Every other you know really mobile quarterback, uh, maybe Russell Wilson excluded, uh, ends up getting hurt and doesn't last that long. But I'm the one who's gonna do it. See, because you brought it up, I'm looking at the 2012. That was the Andrew Luck RG3 draft in 2013, and let's say. Washington didn't go at RG3. The next quarterback down, if you wanted to go quarterback, I don't know if you would take him at number two. Ryan Tannehill went eighth overall to the Dolphins. Yeah. they. I mean, they definitely, they wouldn't have, uh, they wouldn't have been number two at that point because you assume if they're not going to RG3, they're not making the trade. Let's say they make the trade, but they don't go with RG3. Then you, there's no way you're going for the quarterback. RG, I mean RG three made sense at the time because he was the he was he was quarterback a Heisman winner. Yeah, he, he was, was a 2011 two. Heisman winner. He was the without a doubt number two quarterback. Uh, and I mean the Redskins did. That's the hard thing because it's just the situation. It's why a guy like Christian Ponder, uh, like Ryan Tannehill, get drafted in the first round because someone goes, "I need a quarterback. I can't win without a quarterback." I don't know if this guy's going to be around. I have to take him. Yeah, and I mean, I'm thinking about this as them having the number two pick. You could have taken, they didn't really need Trent Richardson. They didn't really need a running back. But, I mean, Matt Khalil, he was a uh, blue chip offensive lineman coming out. Justin Blackman, Morris Claiborne, Luke Keekley. Is it Keekley or Kukley? Keekley. Keekley. I did say it right. Usually I say it wrong. And then if we look, let's say you don't go quarterback in 2012. You wait for 13. I don't know how that would have panned out because the first one to go off the board in 2013 was EJ Manuel at 16. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think in that case, they probably would have been trying to go maybe some free agent quarterbacks. Uh, Maybe, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, when he was a free agent. Yeah, it was Manuel and then in the second round, Geno. Yeah, exactly. Um. Yeah, it's just like I don't I don't know who they would have gone. I mean, maybe Matt Flynn would have ended up in in Washington. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just interesting to think about, of course. But I just think in this situation, you can't get rid of the coach right now because even if you get rid of the coach, you're saying, "Hey, I picked the wrong coach." You know, you're saying we could not decide on a good coach, uh, well, and we pick someone who we don't agree with, and it's going to be a very hard situation for a good coach to come in here. This is how I feel, and this goes across the league. And across the league in any sport, even the NBA. I think this when I'm watching Sports Center and they're talking about basketball and how Cleveland was losing a couple games early in the season, I thought the same thing that I do now about Washington. When you hire a head coach, you shouldn't hire a coach because of a player. You should hire a coach like let's say they hired Jay Gruden. He has his system. Now that you hired him, what players do we need to get to make this system work? Not, okay, we have this player. I want to hire this coach because I like him and I think he's the right man for the job. But I want to. It's kind of like when you're uh, playing with the toy with the shapes when you're a kid. You're trying to jam that triangle into the square hole. It's not going to work. Yeah, Ricky tried that a long time. RG3 is the triangle. Jay Gruden has a square hole that he needs to put in, and For you sure. need that square quarterback, not the triangle I, I quarterback. I think the problem with the NFL now, though, is that you can't do that anymore. You can't have a quarter. I mean, a coach sit there for four years building a team. It's all right. Uh, we need somebody who's going to win, maybe this year or next year, uh, and you don't get that. I mean, a coach at most gets three years. Uh, that's hey, that's enough time. I would think for me, that's enough time to build at least something to. Okay, we've made the playoffs, and I'm happy. Oh, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it's, it, I mean, if you have a team me, like the Redskins and you're completely rebuilding, to me, not everyone can. Like, I know how everyone says, "Oh, we want to model what either the Green Bay Packers or the Seattle Seahawks did, especially the Seahawks." Pete Carroll comes in, they have a seven and nine season here. And that seems like right after that, two seasons, boom, they're top dog because they they built their defense. With Green Bay, I am just going to say this. They got lucky with Aaron Rodgers. 
because nobody knew. Yeah, he was sitting behind Brett Favre for a couple of years. No one knew he was going to be as good as he was. Oh, for sure. Because his whole thing was, oh, they drafted him. Oh, he's going to sit behind Favre. Who knows if he even sees the field. They might. He might fade out before Brett even leaves. Yeah. And that would have that might have happened if Brett stayed in those three the Jets and two Minnesota if he stayed that in Green Bay that's three more years and we don't see Aaron Rodgers yeah Aaron Rodgers would probably have been a backup somewhere else and uh-huh. then maybe got a starting job um, it's it's interesting I don't know uh, the whole Redskins debate I the answer to me is you got to let RG three go uh, that's and that's pretty much all it is you don't necessarily have to let him go. Um, but he's probably, he's at least competing for the starting job. It's not his job anymore. Uh, but Colt McCoy, Kirk Cousins, uh, neither one of them are answers either. You're looking for somebody else to compete with RG3, I think. Well, and here comes my question that I'm going to throw out there because people have talked about it. The Bears. Mm Mm-hmm. My mom said she heard on the radio. She heard on the radio that the Bears were going. She quote unquote heard yeah, well, on the radio that the Bears were for sure going to trade Jay Cutler, which I don't see because if they too much money. Well, if they made that announcement, we would be hearing it all over ESPN that day. Besides that, the Bears have been. There has been speculation, I should say, that the Bears are thinking about getting rid of Jay Cutler, and. To me, one of the teams that you see all these sports sites have the like, oh, top five teams that Jay Cutler could go to if he was traded. And the one team that seems to be consistently on each list, Washington. I already mentioned it before. Maybe if RG3 fit that kind of a quarterback, what are the odds maybe Jay Gruden says, hey, there's a quarterback in Chicago that the fans don't – well, some of the fans don't like. More, the other fans that did like him are starting to turn on him. Why not go for him? I mean, I'm sure Jay Gruden, if he had the opportunity, would enjoy a quarterback like Jay Cutler. I think it's a big contract any team's inheriting. Um, a lot of money in one year to, to give Jay. But think about this. What, Jay has – the extension was for, what, three or four more years? Well, after this, it would be three years, right? Uh, Yeah. That's the amount of time you said that – would be given to a coach to turn around a team. Hey, two out of three of those years are still in my three year gap. Hey, we know RG three is not going to work. I would like to keep my job here. Let's do it for sure. I kind of feel. I mean, it's not a coaching decision to tra- no no to trade I know. for quarterback, uh, but he would make a yeah push. for sure. I I just think like I don't know. I obviously getting uh, a quarterback like Jay Cutler is going to be a pretty pretty good way to do it. I mean. You know exactly what you're getting out of it. Well, people like to say he's very inconsistent. He is a little inconsistent, uh, if I'm putting it nicely. But um, you you definitely know the kind of guy you're getting out of Jay Cutler, where you go to the draft and you're just going, wow, I really hope that Mariota is going to be the real deal. Mm -hmm. Um, Or, you know, or whatever in that case. He's probably the most surefire guy you could get and just put in there and have it work. Um, I just I can't see it realistically happening. Even though I think there are plenty of people in Chicago who are, you know, thinking, hey, this is a very real possibility. Could we possibly move Jay Cutler and see what happens? But then the same situation happens for the Chicago Bears of, yeah, but who's up next? Jimmy Clausen? I'm going to throw this out there. And this kind of leads into what we're going to talk about next anyways. Johnny Football. He's going to start this week in Cleveland. Maybe. That means a big maybe. Maybe. If Hoyer gets re-signed by the Browns, if you are, let's say if Chicago said we are going to move Jake, that's the right move, should they then go after Brian Hoyer or just say, hey, we're going to keep Cutler and then let Washington maybe go after him? Oh, would, yeah. Br- would I, Brian Hoyer be a good quarterback for Jake nope. Gruden to go after? Nope. Uh, I mean, I think he proved that he's a competent, like, stopgap quarterback, mm-hmm. but you're just kind of putting a bandage on the wound at the moment and hoping that nobody pulls it off. Um, yeah, Brian Hoyer, no way he stays with the Cleveland Browns after this, uh, after what has happened here. It was his job. He lost that job. He probably doesn't feel like he deserved to lose that job, uh, even though he's, those interceptions are piling up. I can't see another team saying, yeah, Brian Hoyer, that dude, those first, you know, what, six, seven games? Those first few games, 
that's the guy we're going to have. Not the guy who we've seen lately who lost his starting mm-hmm. job. Yeah, I just don't I don't believe in it. Um, I think he's a good – if you are a team that's like, hey, we got a rookie quarterback or we're going for a veteran backup, maybe you do go for Brian Hoyer only because, whatever, he's just another guy competing for the job. You can get rid of him. I, I don't see him getting any big money anywhere anyways. And right now, the next best thing that you would think about is, okay, if there's not a free agent quarterback to go to, and we're just talking about Washington here, what are you going to get from the draft? Right now, if the standings were to be finalized today, that's what the NFL draft is going to be. Washington would have the sixth overall pick in the draft. Tampa would be number one. Oakland won themselves into the number two pick. Good Jacksonville, that. Tennessee, New York, the Jets, then Washington. Here are the quarterbacks that WalterFootball.com has ranked as their top quarterbacks this year. Number one, they have Jameis Winston. But Winston, he could technically stay if he wanted to. He has two more years of eligibility. Marcus Mariota could stay for a senior season. Connor Cook, Michigan State, could stay for a senior season. Dak Prescott, Mississippi State. Could stay for a senior season. There's Brett Hundley. Could stay for a senior season. The first senior quarterback we get to, Shane Mannion Mannion of Oregon State. None of these quarterbacks to me, even even though Jameis Winston's up top, and I know Marcus Mariota's been like, the people are putting him on that pedestal as the top quarterback of this class. I don't know if any of these quarterbacks are, that's our guy, like Andrew Luck was. And I know that that's like, there's so many people probably screaming at the at their computers right now. Ricky, you can't do that. That's like saying that this guy's not Elway. For sure. Um, I don't know. For, for me, like I'm sitting there. This, th- you know, those top teams you mentioned. About three of them probably need a quarterback. Um, you could argue more. Uh, so okay, who do you think? I'm, sa- I'm saying Tampa, Tennessee, and the Jets need quarterbacks. Because Oakland drafted one last year. Yeah. Oakland and Jacksonville drafted one exactly. last year. Exactly. So just wait and see for that for a couple more years. Um, but, like, I just don't. Tennessee those... has Zach Mettenberger, though, that they drafted yeah, last year. Yeah, but they year. got him, what, in the fifth round? Fourth yeah, round? But they, they're they still, like, is that a wait and see, too? I don't. Because he's a so. rookie? I mean, he's had, I think he's had an opportunity, and I've, I mean, not, the that, only... not that Carr's done anything well, great, but I've liked him a little bit better than Mettenberger. You're talking. You're comparing Oakland to Tennessee, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, what's his name? I'm blanking. Uh, not Jokel. That's the offensive lineman. Locker. Mm-hmm. He's the guy in Tennessee. Yeah. That. Oh, I'm kind of happy that they took him over my Vikings and whatever draft. That was a Christian Ponder draft and the Colt McCoy draft, I think. But I, I don't know. I think Tennessee hangs on to him because the only reason he's getting replaced this week, I think, is because it. Inj- I know he got injured last week. Don't know if he's going to play for sure or not. And Tampa, do they really uh, ditch the McCown train uh, after I, signing I think him? it was a huge mistake. Yeah, but does Lovey do – how many huge mistakes do you know Lovey saying, that was a mistake, let's look the other way? Or does he just ride the mistake? We know the answer to that question. Yeah, he typically is going to ride that mistake as far as he can uh, and hopefully not lose a job. But I, I think if you're number one overall – it is very tempting. When you have that ability to take any quarterback you want, and it's I, tempting. And I mean, to be honest, for the Jets, I know it's going to be tempting to take, let's say, either Jameis Winston or even, a, I would say more so, Marcus Mariota. If he's there, if he's there at number five, it's going to be really tempting to take him. But I think the Jets are, would go, hey, how's the mobile quarterback thing worked for us so far? Fantastic. Yeah, but at I, the same time, people are going to go, but it's freaking Marcus Mariota. Yeah, but, but I, people keep saying that, and I just keep thinking, mobile quarterbacks, they don't work. Uh, there's one or two that are working in the NFL, and there's a whole bunch that aren't. Here's my thing. I wonder, How many people out of that Oregon system do you know them. come out, and it's like, oh, yeah, they're good? None of them. Kenyon Barner, the running back. Haven't heard much of him yeah. lately. DeAnthony Thomas. Well, I will say that the, uh, the the Bears got a pretty good offensive lineman out of okay, Oregon. Okay, I'm talking like wide receivers, yeah. quarterbacks. D- defensive end, I think Deion Jordan yeah. was an Oregon guy. He's doing well. But I'm talking quarterbacks, wideouts, running backs, these 
fast guys. The main ones, yeah. How I, many of them come into the NFL and it's like, boom, they're good. They're I just great. want to know, like, for you know, organi- people at the top of the organization or scouts, how frustrating it has to be uh, when you're looking at college football. And, like, for the NFL, the quarterback position is so much more important now than ever before. And you're sitting there looking at the uh, college football and going, why are all of you doing this stupid mobile shit? I'm sick of it. I need a pocket passer. He can move around, but I need someone who can throw the well, ball. And I think that's the difference between the the biggest difference between the college and the um the pro game is the pro game is of course we have an offense named after it, the pro style offense. The college game is who can run the fastest, who can move around the quickest. I mean, Jameis Winston Thrower and he can run. Mariota, thrower and a runner. Connor Cook, pocket guy. Yep. But, but that's Michigan State. Michigan State's not going to have a scrambler. Uh, Dak Prescott, throw and run. Um, Garrett Grayson, Colorado State. I'll be honest, haven't seen any film of Colorado State. Brett Hundley can throw and run. Sean Manning, mostly a thrower. And then the other one's like Bryce Petty. He's mostly a thrower, but that's because Baylor just likes to air it out. Yeah, and those air it out type of offenses, I don't trust them. I don't trust them for the NFL because it really does kind of inflate some of those numbers. And when you're just kind of – those teams that are just airing it out all the time are typically teams that don't play the best of mm-hmm. teams. Uh, so they don't really see those good like SEC type of defenses. Um, so it's just – it's it's got to be rough. I just want to be in the room for somebody watching all the quarterback tapes and going – why not just why not just one guy who I know is going to well, go back there and throw? And it? I mean, there are some quarterbacks here which I question how they're going to do in the NFL. They have Everett Golson, Notre Dame quarterback, listed as a four, five, or six round draft pick. But to me, can he be a late round steal? How is he? Because he's a thrower and a runner. What about T- uh, Taylor Kelly, Arizona State? There's some people that have huge hype. Over him, where I just don't see it. Broxton Miller, he's going back for a senior year because of injury. Bo Wallace, to me, Bo Wallace is a whole uh, decision making thing because there was the LSU game on the last play. He could have thrown, like, okay, it's not open. Throw it out of bounds, get one more play to try to win that game. But instead, he went Brett Favre mode and went, I'm going to gunsling it into that hole intercepted yeah not many people can pull that off and you look like an idiot when you try and then the last two i was going to say is devin gardner for michigan i think he's going to be like denard robinson switch him to a running back yeah Yeah. and nick marshall auburn he's a like i know that he's not a pocket passer he's a thrower and a runner there's a lot of mobile quarterbacks in the college game and when you're an nfl scout you're going I don't want this guy. I want a guy who can throw the ball. He's a quarterback. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Which the, I know quarterback doesn't have throwing or running in it. Yeah, but, I mean, it, we understand. Um, I mean, the mobile quarterback thing, like, yeah, it's great when it can work out. But there's only really – I mean, if you really try to think of a team that Chip successfully Kelly's, is doing it. Chip Kelly. Yeah, but, I mean, he's still doing a lot of, a lot of throwing. No, I know. And but, it, I mean, Nick Foles has the mobility, but it's still a – Mobile to throw. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's just not a team out there where you're like, yeah, that team, like, like their quarterback runs around. What happens is they do it their rookie year, or they do it until they get hurt, and then at some point somebody Russell stops Wilson. them and says, stop doing that. Russell Wilson. But he's got a great team he's got a great, behind him. He's got a whole great team. <laughs> that team is stacked. Yeah, basically, the, the Seattle Seahawks are probably the one team that does it. But even in that case, such a huge benefit from – who's going to be leaving, apparently, yeah. Marshawn Lynch. I mean, I can't, like, let's see, NFC East. Nick Foles, is he can kind of do it, but like we said, pass first. Tony Romo doesn't really run. Eli Manning, not a runner. And then Washington, we know the debacle they're in. Aaron Rodgers can run. And but, does so very successfully. But he's mo- he's a throw first but, guy. And that's the reason why he runs so well, not only because he's a surprisingly mobile, but because at any time he's going to go over the top of your yep. head. And then you've got Stafford and Teddy Bridgewater, so not really mobile guys. Atlanta, you got Matt Ryan, Drew Brees, 
Cam Newton's kind of like weaning himself off of that. Then you got Luke McCown. Of course, you're. Is it Luke or Josh? Cause I always get that wrong. We're talking about Josh right now. Josh. I don't know why I keep saying Luke, but Josh because McCown, you know what, neither one of them are that good. He's not a mobile guy. You have Carson Palmer slash Drew Stanton in Arizona. Russell Wilson scrambles. Colin Kaepernick kind of does it. And Sam Bradford wasn't a scrambler. That's the whole NFC. Then you have Tom Brady, Tannehill, um, Kyle Orton, and then the Jets are all mobile. You have Andy Dalton doesn't. Big Ben doesn't as much as he used to. Like we said, did it as a rookie, doesn't now. Flacco doesn't do it. Johnny Football's going to do it. Until he probably gets hurt. Luck is in the same category as Aaron Rodgers. He's a great passer, can run when he wants to. Um, Houston, I'm trying to think Fitzpatrick doesn't, Mettenberg doesn't, Bortles doesn't, and then Manning no, Rivers no, um, Alex Smith no, David Carr no, or Derek Carr no. It just doesn't really, just doesn't really work out in the NFL. And, and for a guy like Johnny Football, the thing that I, what I really wanted um, for for uh, how do you think? Let, let's move over to that. How do you think he's what I really do wanted Marvin start? Lewis to say, uh, coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, was all right, we're gonna make sure he's injured. I really wanted to say that because that's my biggest fear for Johnny Manziel. You can't say that though, because yeah, then you come off sounding like Bounty Gate for sure. I just think, like, for the Cleveland Browns, their biggest fear right now is you switch quarterbacks, you know, Hoyer's pissed, he wants out, and then what happens? Johnny Football does what Johnny Football does, he runs around, he gets hurt. I mean, he doesn't really get hurt very so RG3's often. At all. It. But yeah, that's what you're very nervous about if you're the Cleveland Browns. Because every time one of those quarterbacks starts moving around, the mobile quarterbacks, you know the coaches are going, oh shit, don't get hurt, don't get hurt, don't get hurt. I, see, I don't know. To me, I feel like Johnny Football has, I feel like sitting him earlier in the season was a good thing because it matured him. And he's going to do uh, – the biggest thing I think of is, especially at mobile quarterbacks, maybe it's in my mind, I compare them to Tim Tebow. How is he going to do mm-hmm. compared to Tebow? Because Tebow was a guy where it was like – a little bit like, oh, we're comparing RG3 right now. He didn't fit in the Elway because Elway's Elway. He wants a quarterback that played like he did. He I am Peyton a pocket Manning. guy. Yeah. yeah. And Tim Tebow was not that. And, but Tim Tebow did what Johnny Manziel can do. He made plays when he had to. That miraculous play, like you said, in the playoff game against the Steelers. They beat the Bears. I know that was uh, Mary and the Barbarians' fault. Yeah, but yeah Tim he, Tebow he, made enough plays to win that stuff. game. And it's make enough plays. That's the thing. Make enough plays. Not outperform the other team. Not be better than the other quarterback. Make enough plays. For sure. Um I, I just wonder with the – I don't know. I, I do wonder what goes through coaches' heads if they, if they are really nervous about the injuries uh, because obviously a lot of these guys, they stop running so much. They really do. Uh, and Johnny Manziel, I'm very interested – I'm very excited to watch him play, um, but I'm very interested to see how he plays, uh, especially to see if he kind of – I don't know. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little nervous he might get a little cocky. He might start making dumb decisions if he gets a little too cocky. Yeah, and I mean, the whole big thing with the Browns right now, you have to win this game. For sure. You have to win that. Like, you can't even worry about what Pittsburgh— If you're the Cleveland Browns, win out. You have to pretty much well, have yeah. to win all these games. But, I mean, you have to win this week because if you lose, you're, you're done. Because right now, the Bengals have, what, a game and a half? The Bengals are eight, four, and one. Cleveland is seven and six. So Cincinnati would still be ahead of you, but you could maybe jump the Steelers or the Ravens. You get a shot at the Ravens. You lost to the Ravens. So you need that for a tiebreaker. Who are the Ravens and the Steelers even playing this week? Ravens have Jacksonville. I'm gonna assume that's a win, so I'm not even gonna worry about it. Pretty safe. You gotta win. And the Steelers have the Falcons. So if I'm the coach, I'm just saying, boom, you got to win. It's you're, a must win. Congrats. You're in the playoffs now. You got to win every single game. Yep. Congratulations, Johnny. You're starting. You're in the playoffs. Well, and I kind of think about it. And, okay, tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe it's because I just watched this 30 for 30 today. But I think the Browns could be a team from now on where it's like, okay, just – Hang in there. 
if the game is close in the closing seconds, we're just going to steal it away. Yeah, for sure. Like we don't have to be win because we proved against Indianapolis. If we win the, if we're winning the entire game, it doesn't matter. We just got to keep it close and then steal it at the end. Yeah, I definitely th- was when you have a mobile quarterback. Because mobile quarterbacks are best in the fourth. Because you're not going to blow out these teams. Maybe Carolina because now Cam Newton might not play that game. Oh yeah, we for don't sure. know. Um, I I just think that uh, mobile quarterbacks are going to be best in the fourth quarter. That's when they're really going to just light it up and they're going to go crazy and go, hey, I can do whatever the hell I want. Uh, you know, basically they play like they've got nothing to live for, essentially, uh, which is very dangerous but very successful at times. And it, they, that's when they that's when they shine. And I think Johnny Manziel is really going to shine a lot. Um, I have no doubts about his ability to play. My only my only hang up with Johnny Football is my same same hang up with everybody else. The injury thing. I don't want him to get hurt. I think I, see. I feel like if you do that, you're playing scared. And I know that in injuries can happen anytime. You could trip over a grocery bag. You can get into a car accident. You could sneeze. Yeah, and hurt your back for sure. And of course, that's a throw at Carlos Boozer and what Sammy Sosa was the sneezing, right? Um, I don't know. Was he I, if he was one as well? I, I don't, don't pay attention know, to the Cubs because they are awful. I know Carlos Boozer was the I tripped over my grocery bag at home. Yeah, and he broke his toe or something. But you can get injured doing anything for sure. You can, but I mean, I mean, you, yeah, you're right. You can't you can't play scared or anything like that. But at the same time, you also kind of have to play smart of like, hey, and I'm the. Got a slide. And I feel like Johnny Football, if you put uh, – maybe the sliding thing I'm not talking about, I would say let Johnny Football be Johnny Football. Well, that's why you drafted him. Because he's not a personality where you kind of cage it away. It's kind of like the – yet again, I'm only bringing up this analogy because I watched this 30, 30, 30 for 30 today when – the Pistons had Dennis Rodman before they won their championship. I think it was in the 80s, right before the Bulls won theirs in the 90s. Their best chance was, okay, we got to let Dennis Rodman be Dennis Rodman. You didn't draft him because he's the quiet guy who's going to just sit there and do his job. He was a rebounder. He was tenacious. That's who he was. With Johnny Football, it's the same way. You drafted him because he can make plays on the football field. That's what he's going to do. Does he do it like Tom Brady? Does he do it like Peyton Manning? No. But if he gets the results, why does it matter how you got there? Oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, I'm excited to watch Cleveland for a little bit. I want Cleveland to be excited about something for once. It's been I too sad. I kind of don't, but I kind of do, but it's I kind of don't. too sad. I, I'm in a tough situation. I wanted Cleveland to fail. Because I wanted Johnny Manziel to start. I wanted them to lose out because I didn't think they were going to go anywhere. I didn't think they were going to start Johnny Manziel as soon as they did. But now that he's starting, I want him to win out kind of a thing. I wanted them to win out for Johnny, not for Cleveland. If that makes any sense. I like Cleveland. You like Cleveland? I like Cleveland because they're an underdog. It's always just nothing but sadness, and I want them to finally be able to smile. I want the sun to finally come out in Cleveland. Okay, I got. we're going to move on to our... One of our last two things for this podcast. We were talking earlier about Jay Gruden. Should he be fired after a year? Because some people are saying that he could or should because RG3 should be picked. That made me think of uh, what other coaches are probably going to lose their job after the season. Here are the ones that I'm just throwing out there. and One of these I'm throwing out there for Dave. Tom Coughlin, 4-9 and nine right now, not going to make the playoffs. Mark Trussman, they're five and eight. Is he really on the hot seat? For Dave, you've got Lovey at two and eleven. You have Rex Ryan at two and eleven. Jacksonville's at two and eleven. Tennessee's at two and eleven. And Oakland, I know they have an interim coach. He did get two wins, but they're two and eleven also. What coaches are probably going to get fired after the season? Um, I think both. Like I said on the last podcast. Everybody, everyone on the coaching staffs of the, both the New York teams need to go. Um, the, these teams have been underperforming for too long. Uh, just as a fan of, I'm not a fan of those teams, but if I was a fan of the team, I would be so sick of it. And if I'm any part of that organization, I got to be sick of this too. These two, these two coaches are not living up to what they should be and what they are capable of. 
So get rid of those. Um, when it comes to Lovey, no, Lovey's not getting fired. Uh, when it comes, does anyone really get chutted this year? I don't think. I there's feel any like chuds. that should be a a verb. Chutted. Yeah, I don't think there'll be any chutting going on <laughs> in the NFL. Um, I don't think that. I I just don't think that Tressman gets fired. I can't see it. I think it's going to be typical Chicago Bears fashion where it'll be get rid of the offensive coordinator, get rid of the defensive coordinator, leave the head coach. I think for Chicago, Mel Tucker. If anyone's getting fired, it's going to be Mel. Oh, I think the I think both offense and defense really? are all gone. Who is your offensive coordinator? Uh, Aaron Cromer. Okay. Just doing nothing. I mean, yeah, he's doing <laughs> stuff out there. But, but really, isn't it's it, Tressman. That's, isn't it really Tressman who yeah, runs the offense? Essentially. Um, but, yeah, I think it's going to be clean house except for Trustman in that case. I know a lot of people probably disagree. I'm going to say one thing in combatants to your New York coaches. I feel like there's a part of me that feels like Coughlin's not going to get fired. Because at any time he can win another Super Bowl. No, no, no. It's not that. It's looking at – this is the only thing that I think can save Tom Coughlin's job is if you look at the New York Giants injured reserve, they have – um, Walter Thurman the uh, third, Prince of Makamura, Howard Travis, their top three, top three of their corners out for the year. You had Kiwanuka out for the year. You have two linebackers out, three running backs, Peyton Hills and David Wilson. David Wilson, we know, is not going to play in his entire career after his injury. Victor Cruz. There are so many people that you lost for the year. That I feel like the management goes, okay, he could have done something. What could he have done if these guys. Yeah, but you lose your first playing? two games in pretty convincing fashion, too. Yeah, but they lost a lot of guys. Yeah, I know, but I just think like some of those losses are losses that happened midseason, um, and you weren't doing very well. You had to stretch where you won three games, and that's about it. Um, I don't know. I just think it's been too much of Coughlin not doing well anymore. Mm-hmm. To where, I mean, the guys. He's been coaching for a while. You know, he's old coach. I think it's time to go somewhere else for the New York Giants. I mean, how much longer do you really think that Tom Coughlin's going to be around? Forever. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's the same thing for me. I mean, I know you can't get rid of Eli Manning. Mm-hmm. Um, but same thing for Eli Manning for me. Like, he he underperforms so often to where oh. you just wonder how long is New York going to say, yeah, Eli Manning's still our guy. Okay, overall with the Giants. Tom Coughlin has a record of 94 wins, 79 losses. So he's a 54.3 win percentage. He's also 8-3 and three in the playoffs, but all, four of, or all eight of those wins came in the Super Bowl. He never like won a game and then lost a game. He either lost in the first game they played or won the Super Bowl. So if they're going to win, they're winning it all. And he hasn't been to the playoffs since the last Super Bowl in 2011. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and that was a surprising team. But it, mm-hmm. I don't know. He's an interesting guy where he, he does seem like he's the kind of guy who will motivate everybody and get everybody playing really well. Uh, but when things fall apart, things fall apart. And I, I think that's part of Eli Manning, too. Not really doing well when things fall apart. Um, so I don't know. New York, The New York Giants are very interesting to me. Because they're really clinging on to the past a little bit, I think, uh, in some of this. And Eli Manning, uh, he's, I mean, he's not old, but, I mean, there's got to be some looking to the future. I don't think Ryan Nassib is the answer. Can I throw a name out there? Sure. This is not one that's going to get fired. I bring this up because on PTI, they talked about this coach maybe leaving after this season for a different team. Odds that Sean Payton leaves the Saints on his own accord to coach a different team? Uh, Zero. You think he stays in New Orleans? Without it. If Drew Brees is there, Sean Payne is there. Because, I mean, right now, 5-8. and eight, I mean, even if you make the playoffs, if you make the playoffs, he stays. But what if they don't make the playoffs? It's a losing record. The defense doesn't look good. I know you have Drew Brees, and you can get a good three or four more years out of Brees at the least. Yeah. Do And there have been speculations that hey maybe does sean payton say this is i'm done here in uh no i in new I, orleans i don't think so i mean i think those type of guys have all done such great things for new orleans i think they have such a great attachment to new orleans uh i i can't see but you don't see him leaving i can't see him going anywhere what about uh 
Ron Rivera. No, they just went to the playoffs the year before. Yeah, but they made some ter- really dumb decisions in the offseason, and they're paying season. for it. They're paying for really bad decisions, uh, not by Ron Rivera in the offseason. What about Harbaugh? We haven't brought up Harbaugh. You know, I mean, if, if I will say as a Chicago Bears fan, Jim, not John. Yeah, if well, yeah, if we're going to lose out, uh, if, if Trustman's gone. Then, by all means, yeah. All right, let's make these Harbaugh rumors true, and let's get him to Chicago. Uh, because, the old quarterback comes home. Yeah, he's got some connection to Chicago. Not that it's anything good and anything we can really be that happy about. But, um, it, you know, it, it works, and, and he's a very physical defense, de- defensive-minded uh, coach who also, I think, can work really well with these weapons. Um, and he only goes to the NFC Championship game. So that's good. Except for this year. Well, it hasn't happened yet, Ricky. Uh, I don't know. You, lo- you lost to Oakland. Season's over. It hasn't happened <laughs> yet. Um, but, yeah, I, I just think I, – I don't believe the rumors because they just are too ridiculous to me. How you can have a coach that's been so successful these past years and then just go, all right, see you later. We're going to trade you for draft picks. Like that now, I, blows my mind. I don't think it's so ludicrous because this is what I feel like. Jim Harbaugh is not a player's coach. He is a coach that's like, you know what? You're on my team. We're going to get results no matter how that happens. I don't care. We're going to do it my way or the highway. And yes, they've gotten to the conference championship, but – over time, this friction has just been rubbing some players the wrong way. I think it's the players that are so sure. upset with them, not really management. I, I think that's kind of – but see, for me, when I look at that, that's more of an issue. You can't let the players pick the team in that game. Like, it's too bad. If you're having an issue with the coach and he's a successful, he's doing well, see you later. You're gone in that case. By the me. way, I want to throw out a side note because mm-hmm. early in the year we asked – uh what would be the amount of wins for the Raiders to throw a parade? We're two wins away. They got two road games against Denver and KC with a Buffalo home game in the middle. It's possible, hey, man. Th- they get two more wins. We're throwing a parade. We said four wins. And yeah. we even asked when we did the interview with uh, just blogbaby.com, their lead editor said, uh, yeah, four wins, perfect parade. I would throw a parade downtown for four wins. Almost there. Almost, Almost there, Oakland. You got three. You got three more chances to do it. But I mean, going back to Jim Harbaugh, this is what I see playing out. They're not going to make the playoffs. He leaves. Go to Michigan. No, I got. There's. I don't believe it. It's very funny to me how Nebraska, Florida, and Oregon State, because Oregon State had to fill a hole because their coach went to Nebraska, have all filled their vacancies. Michigan's still open. And, I mean, maybe they are hoping, but to me, if you're you're in the top— You know they're waiting because yeah. of him. Well, I mean, unless you're Nick Saban, you don't—like, no coaching position in college football is better than NFL football. Nick Saban's the only college coach that has it better than some NFL coaches. Uh, Urban Meyer? I don't believe—I mean, Urban Meyer had to leave— uh, the Florida he Gators for a little be- bit. He left because of health issues, though, not yeah. because he was kicked out of and, town. And now he he's kind of, I mean, yeah, o- uh, not Oakland. Ohio State has been doing great things, but, I mean, he's still kind of building it up. For me, it's Nick Saban has built that dynasty, and they are a force to be reckoned with every time. Give me five years on Urban Meyer and maybe. I'm trying to think of other. There's, um, I think his name is Shaw with Stanford. Yeah. I mean, they're not a they're not as perennial as... Alabama, usually. yeah, but that's another thing where Harbaugh just left, and now and now he's been kind of reestablishing himself as a coach. Would it be kind of like, uh, and I'm thinking more into college basketball now, but like Tom Izzo, how he's been at Michigan State for twenty, he, he yeah, he signed at Michigan when I was four and you were three, yeah, and he's been there ever since, or like Coach K or Roy Williams, exactly. It's these. None of these college football jobs are going to be those type of jobs where it's just I, they just don't compete with the NFL in this case. I mean, college basketball. I mean, look at Chip Kelly made the crazy. jump from Oregon to in like a heart after everyone was like, "Oh no, he's not going to leave." He goes, Boom, yeah, immediately yeah. jumps to yeah. the NFL. But Oregon's a job where for years it's just up oh, coach leaves, 
okay, you've been in the system, step right up. It's just next man up, system stays the same, we fly. For sure. Ducks fly together, you know that? I If, if Harbaugh <laughs> goes anywhere, it's another NFL job. So Oakland. Or Chicago. What about Oakland? Do you, if Chicago's not open, does he go to Oakland? I don't know why anyone would want to go to Oakland. If he has no choice, I sure, take Oakland. But I don't know why anybody wants to go to Oakland. Because he's Jim Harbaugh. I mean, I could see why Oakland wants him, because he's Jim Harbaugh. I can see why Oakland wants a fucking bag of potato chips out there coaching the team. <laughs> they don't have a coach right now. They got an interim coach. And I mean, looking at the other side, if um, San Francisco gets rid of him, who do you who do you necessarily go after? Yeah. And that's, a, that's one of the big things that kind of gets ignored in this, because they're really, like... I, it's not like they have like some coordinator that's there and everyone's like, man, this guy's going to be the next big coach. Like I just, what do you do? There's no guarantee if you switch coaches that everything's going to mm-hmm. stay the same. Maybe the next coach comes in and goes, all right, cool. You know what guys? We're just going to go all vertical. And I mean, I'm looking at an article. It was an article I pulled up before we started the podcast on fansite.com. They named five NFL coordinators who could be up for head coaching jobs. The first one, number five, Rob Ryan. Why would, if you're hiring a head coach, why would you want him? Look at what he's done this year with that defense in New Orleans. It's been a debacle. Mm -hmm. Why would I want that as a head coach? And plus, look at your brother. Your brother hasn't been so well either. Your dad was the only good head coach. That's what I think. Am I wrong? The only Ryan to be successful. I mean, Rex Ryan started out successful. No, I mean now. Yeah, I mean, it's gone downhill, definitely. Number four, offensive coordinator for Denver. I could see him getting a job, Adam Geese. Yeah. He was supposed yeah. to get the, uh, I think it was, what was it, the Charger job when McCoy went for it? Yeah. Um, or he was in the running for the Arizona job. But, I mean, at the same time, it's a, it's a little funny when you look at somebody who's using Peyton Manning and the all-star cast of wide receivers that is yeah. Denver. Look at what McCoy's done with Philip Rivers compared to yeah. Peyton. Um Darren Bavell, defensive or offensive coordinator with Seattle. He was in the running for the Arizona job. Yeah, Seattle's basically a coaching factory right now. Ray Horton, defensive coordinator with the Titans. And last but not least, Todd Boyles, defensive coordinator, Arizona Cardinals. And, and I'm that, taking, oh, and I'm taking these all from that's a great defense. All from the article. Yeah, I just and if I'm San Francisco, I go with a. I don't know. I would go. Maybe it's just me. I would go with an offensive quarterback, or not quarterback uh, coach. head coach. Yeah, maybe it's me because I'm an offensive guy. Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know. You've had this big physical team for so long. Um, I don't know. I More of the same, I guess, might not be a good thing since you just got rid of that mm-hmm. for no reason, essentially. Um, so, yeah, maybe you do have to go offense. Try something new. Okay, the last thing that we're going to bring up to talk about in this podcast is it's our first. I know we got a little bit NFL drafty. During the Redskins, but uh, we got to bring this up because it's big news for this week. The he was a running back who used to hold the single game rushing record for college, but got dethroned, I think, by what was it? TCU's back the week later. Melvin Gordon, Wisconsin running back. He's uh he's saying, hey, you know what? Bye bye, Madison. I'm going to the NFL. Yeah, might as well. You had an amazing season. He was a redshirt junior, could have came back, but he's going to the NFL. Yeah, I, I you can't blame the guy. Uh, terrific, terrific season for sure. Uh, some team, I mean, you don't draft running backs in the first round very much uh, anymore, but this is a guy who quite probably could be drafted in the first round. He could be a late, and I know you're giving me the face like, Ricky, I'm an NFL guy. I'm not, re- I'm not the college guy like you are, and I mean, Maybe it's just me because I watch a lot of Big Ten games because I'm an Illini fan, but two straight years, I have seen this guy run all over my favorite college team. And part of me feels like even though I'm an Illini fan, I can't wait until my Vikings draft him because, oh, hey, look at that. 
we have a need at the running back position because of Adrian Peterson. You do. Um, you definitely have a need. Do you want to go first round running back? I don't know if I go first. And right now I pulled up um, Mel Kuyper Jr.'s big board because you can't get – it's never too early to look at a big board, right? Melvin Gordon sits ninth overall with, on the big board, and I believe he is the first. Yeah, he's the first running back at number nine on the big board. And running backs typically fall nowadays. Um, I'm looking to see if there's another. He's the only running back in the top 25 on the uh, on the big board. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's tough now. Uh, obviously. You don't 100 percent know with Teddy Bridgewater, so maybe you do want a good running back back there as well, helping out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I definitely think there's a guy who can make a splash right off the bat. Um, it it's only going to help. I mean, sure, you're only basically getting to where you were last year, uh, but hey, are you there lost any, a piece. Are there any other teams that you can, off the top of your head, just think of that need a running back that badly besides Mini? Um, yeah, I definitely Minnesota needs one. Um. Because I need mean, one as badly as Minnesota, well, probably not. Well, because I mean, Asiata is eh. I know McKinnon, like North I mean, Turner's high on yeah. McKinnon, but he's eh. I think Jacksonville probably could use something because nothing know. has worked out very well. Denard in Jacksonville. Robinson's work, even though he's out for the season now. Yeah, injury doesn't help. It doesn't no. make you feel good, but everything has been injury in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I mean, I'm looking at maybe Detroit. I mean, Joyce Bell though is doing fine there. I mean. Washington's going to have a high pick. They're not going to go running back. Atlanta looks like they're going to try to ride the Devonta Freeman rookie train a little bit more. San Francisco got Carlos Hyde. Seattle? They're going to get rid yeah, of that's right. uh, Marshawn gonna, Lynch. Supposedly Marshawn Lynch is gone, so I guess they do. And we don't know if he's going to retire or go to Oakland. Uh, Jorge, that's what I'm yeah, thinking. I mean, who knows what's going to happen if he does get uh, the boot. Out of Seattle. But, I mean, other than that, maybe, like, Oakland, San Diego, do they really need a running back? I No. The, the big I mean, spot for me, maybe it's because, like I said, I'm a Vikings fan. We need that running back, and he would be great. I would take him if we got a mid-first-round pick. I'd take him because we, we need a good running back to be successful with North Turner's offense. Yeah. We need it. There's no doubt about it. But the one question I'm going to ask you, mm-hmm. going back a little bit because now I've looked at – Mel Kuyper's big board. And let's say right now, if the standings are what they are, Tampa Bay with the first overall pick, and let's say if not, Oakland or Tampa, either or, I'm going to let you pick who's drafting. Who do you go with? Number one on the big board, do you stay true and just say, Marcus Mariota, we need a quarterback? Or number two, defensive end, Southern Cal, Leonard Williams? If I'm Tampa Bay Buccaneers... I'm taking a quarterback. Love you, quarterback. Lovey Smith. Make your splash. Get your quarterback. I I kind of I I was kind of baiting you up for that one because do you think Lovey's not going to take a defensive end number one? Oh, overall? he totally wants that defensive player. And then he's going to bring Lance Briggs over because they're getting the band together back in uh, Tampa. And it's going to be a disaster. Let me ask you this: mm-hmm. Amari Cooper, wide receiver, Alabama. He's listed as the Number three guy on Mel Kuyper's big board. How high does he go? Because wide receivers, maybe five or six is the highest I remember seeing it in recent years. Yeah, I think there's some teams in the actual bottom here that could use wide receivers, but obviously. Not, I'm saying like five, six, seven. Like I'm, I'm saying high. the New York Jets could use a, could use a, uh, a good wide receiver. I think, I think the New York Jets are the – I mean, yeah, there's some other things wrong with the New York Jets as mm-hmm. well. But one thing, I mean, you can't just go out and grab yourself a quarterback and just go, all right, let's hope it all works out. Sometimes it definitely helps to have somebody for your quarterback to throw it to. Well, and I mean, that's like we were talking with the Redskins. You have Deshaun Jackson that, I mean, it's it's like he's getting, it, you're begging it to just throw it to him. And I'm trying to think, I gotta, I'm going to look at this past draft and then come back. But I mean... You got to have wide receivers and Amari Cooper to me. Watching him, especially in that title game against, uh, and I'm talking conference title game, he's a special talent. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at what the Saints did. They go out and get Brandon Cooks. I oh, know they he's love not, it. 
I know he's not like a top end wide receiver. He's done good things though. But before he got injured, he was that slant route guy. Other guys on this list that I'm just looking at, I mean, Devontae Parker, wide receiver, Louisville, he'll be a lower end guy. The big one that, I mean, it all comes back to, though, is Jameis Winston, and he is six. Sixth yeah. overall on Mel Kuyper's big board. And I definitely think that one of these one of these guys, you know, whether it's Mariota or Jameis Winston, one of them's going to be available for the New York Jets to take. I'm going to give you three quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Is, is Jameis Winston going to be like blank? All right. Tim Tebow, Geno Smith, or... RG3, no, I blanked on that last one. Geno Smith, Tim Tebow, or I'm trying to... Th- oh, Johnny Manziel. Oh, okay. Draft-wise, not in the NFL. Like James how they got Yeah, how they got drafted. Where Geno slid into the second round, Johnny Manziel went late first round, mm-hmm. Tim Tebow was a definitive... He went second round. Yeah, I could definitely see... Uh, James Winston going more slip into the second round. So, like... Geno James Smith. Winston is like Geno Smith. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't know. A part of me feels like there's going to be that team that goes first round, got them, and take them, and it'd be stupid. Yeah. I feel like there's a team that's going to do that because, oh, he's Jameis Winston. That kind of that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? I think I, I know what you're why, saying. I don't know why I did that I voice. I think I know way. what you're saying. But I think it and you know my thoughts on Florida State, on Jameis Winston. I'm gonna I'm not the soapbox is there, I'm not gonna stand on it. Mm-hmm. Because you know my thoughts on that. He's not a good quarterback. That's the bottom line of it. But is there anything uh anything else you uh you wanna touch on? Um, no, I mean, I think, I think it's been, I think that's pretty much most of what's important going on right now. Last thing I'm going to say is I have to give condolences to uh, you and your bears. You lost oh, Brandon yeah. Marshall for the year. Yeah. Poor Brandon Marshall. Got to cut him from my fantasy team. It's rough. You don't want to just ceremoniously <laughs> leave him on the roster. I, I might. I mean, it is playoffs. I don't really need them. I don't really yeah. need, I got enough wide receivers with Odell you know Beckham. I'll give you it. I'll trade. I've got you. Mike Evans. I've got wide receivers. I might Whoever just leave you them. want on my roster. <laughs> for Brandon not, Marshall. Because you're not in the playoffs. Yeah, I don't care. But that's going to do it for the Onside Kick. I want to thank you all for listening. Go ahead, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod. Check out, if you're listening to this on YouTube, go check out our other podcasts on our SoundCloud. Me and Mark do a podcast where we read and discuss. The best, and hopefully not the worst, graphic novels called A Graphic Conversation. The next one we're going to do is uh, The Last Christmas. Have we decided that yet? Yeah, it sounds like the next one we're going to do is The Last Christmas. Celebrate gonna get, some Christmas. Going to get ready for some zombie apocalypse-like Christmas. What Santa Claus is going to do. But hit that subscribe, that like button if you're on YouTube. If you're not, go to YouTube. Hit those buttons anyways because they're good to click. I will. Me and Mark will see you guys on the next podcast. Hopefully we'll be joined by the infamous... The man, the myth, the legend, Dave Oster. And as always, have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.